okay? This section is very, very easy. We're talking about 3.5, and we're talking about implicit differentiation. So 3, 5, implicit differentiation. Nice. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do on Desmos. So let's make sure we have Desmos loaded because we're going to need it, okay? So you, you're going to ask me, first of all, what the hell does implicit mean, right? So implicit is uh, implicit and explicit are kind of two ways that we see fun uh, uh, functions written down. So explicit is y equals 1 over x. What am I noticing there? y is isolated, x is isolated, right? All, uh, when I'm talking explicit, which is everything we've had so far, there's no uh, crossover. But if I cross multiply here, Right? If I cross multiply here, I get x, y equals 1. That's implicit. So when the x and the y are uh, uh, gonna say, in, in a product with each other, we're talking about implicit differentiation. When I can isolate y, explicit differentiation. Okay? Yes, make sense at all? So, so for example, if I had uh, something like x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 3, that's implicit. And this one in particular is really, really difficult for me uh, um, to isolate y. Anybody have a, an idea of how you could isolate y here? How could you solve for y? Okay, I can try. I like that. I can try and factor, but clearly, if I factor the y out of here, right, uh, I still have a, I still have another y, right? I'll, I'll, I'll have a product with an x and a y, so, right? I like the idea. It, it just doesn't work. You didn't recognize anything on the left hand side. Does it look like anything here? Some algebra one. Well, it looks like a quadratic. So I, I could try, and I'm not asking you to do this. I could try and say uh, y squared plus uh, xy plus uh, x squared minus 3 equals 0. And I could try with a is 1, b is uh, x, and c is x squared minus 3. Right? I could try and get a quadratic formula for y. Right? Do you see it? It's horrible though, right? What do I get? I get uh, the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times x cubed minus 3 all over 2a. And so now I've got it solved for y. But hideous, right? So oftentimes when we have these implicit things, I might be able to solve for y. Most of the time I can't. Right, right now I'm showing you ones where I can on, pur on purpose. And, uh, and uh, so, but it's often, this is horrible. This is horrible, okay? But the plus minus is gonna give me two, I got two lot values of y. And this, this particular one is, uh, is uh, an ellipse. Um, most of us didn't do uh, uh, conic sections in pre-cal, is that true? Conic sections in pre-cal, who did that? The hyperbola, the ellipse, yes. So in the, in the high school pre-cal course you have it. For some reason we don't. Um, but anyway, if I look at Desmos here, and this is one of the reasons why I'm so happy we're in this classroom, because I cannot plot implicit functions on those dinosaur calculators. So, but in Desmos we can. 
Um, so my first implicit explicit was y equals 1 over x, right? y equals 1 over x. Hopefully you know what that looks like by now. But then I had it as what? Cross multiply x times y equals 1. And you see it's the same function, right? So in, in Desmos, I can plot implicitly. Uh, the next one I had was, uh, I forget, y squared. No, x squared, right? Nice. x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 3. And it's an ellipse. So, right, when I, when I did the quadratic and I solved for y, the positive root was the top half, the negative root was the, the bottom half. Can you, can you read that one to me? What did I have? Y equals uh, negative X, right? I'll just do the plus. S square root of, yep. Yep. Nice, X squared minus three, right? Nice all over two, right? And you can see it's, it's giving me half of that, half of that ellipse, right? So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is sometimes I can solve for y, but it's often easier not to. And so we're learning this new process called implicit differentiation. All right, let's start with our easy example here, right? Let's start with our easy example. Uh, y equals 1 over x. Yes? Who's got this derivative memorized? You all should. Beautiful. When you're in, pre when you're in Calc 2, you need to have all the derivatives memorized that quick. In fact, that's chapter three, okay? So before you take Calc two, you're, re you're gonna review your chapter three. And chapter five, where we undo derivatives, I'm gonna give you the first 10 ways to undo derivatives. And in Calc two, you'll do those over and then do 10 more ways to undo derivatives. So in order to undo derivatives, you must completely know all your derivatives, okay? All right, let's do this one explicitly. Right? So this is, I'm sorry, this is explicit. And this will be implicit. I have xy equals 1, yes? I just cross multiplied to get it, right? But I'm having x's and y's commingle, multiply or divide together, right? So I need to do xy prime equals 1 prime, right? What is that? I'm, what am I saying there? I have an equation of functions. I should, I should take the derivative of both sides and I should still keep my equality, okay? So what happens on the right? What do I get? Zero, yes? On the left, what kind of rule am I gonna use? Product rule. First function is x, derivative of x is one. Second function is y, derivative is what? y prime. So we've already been doing implicit differentiation. You just don't didn't know we were doing it. And I'm doing a product rule here. So I get x y prime plus y equals zero. Is everybody with me? Nice, Jarrell, yes? Yes, David, nice. Michael, yes? Ashton, yes? I want to solve this for y prime. And again, this won't always be easy. I will tell you when I want you to solve for y prime or not, okay? So what do I get? xy prime equals the opposite of y. So I get y prime equals the opposite of y over x. But I know what y was is one over x, right? So y prime is uh, the opposite of 1 over x over x, which of course is the opposite of 1 over x squared. Same answer. Implicitly and explicitly will get me the same result. 
will get me the same derivatives. All right. Let's do. Yeah. Yes. So I started with my x, my implicit function. I I said let's get ready to take a derivative of both sides, right? I put the placeholder of prime in there, right? The other option for me to do there would be do ddx of both sides, right? So ddx of one, right? That just means derivative. Ddx means take a derivative. Prime means take a derivative. So I do, and then I noticed that on the left side I would have a product rule, x times y. So first function is x, derivative of x is 1. Second function is not a function of x. So if it's a y, the derivative is a y prime. If it's a w, it's a w prime. If it's a z, it's a z prime, right? So we're saying, hey, I don't know what the function y is, but I can tell what the derivative is, it's y prime. Seems a little strange, but we've been doing this the whole time. So, so I got my product rule, right? Uh, sorry, so there I got my product rule equals zero, right? And then I just solve for y prime. I because I so again I'm not always going to know what y is, but in this case I knew what y is, right? Because I started with the uh, explicit. I knew y was one over x. So at this point, I can put it in there. I won't always know it. And again, I will be real specific. I will say, solve for y prime, isolate y prime, or not. And you'll see a couple of examples like that today. Nice. We OK here? All right, what's the tricky part here is realizing that you're doing the chain rule. So we're talking about an implicit chain rule. And, and when do you use the chain rule? Always. So if I say y equals x, you're going to say y prime is what? 1. So when you're dealing with a function of x, we're going to use our derivatives like we know. Okay? But if I say uh, y is, uh, let's say, uh, g, that's a, not, and I'm not saying that's a number, I'm saying it's a function, right? I'll, I'll do g of x. What am I saying then? y prime is g prime of x. See, I don't know what the function actually is, right? But I know I need a prime on it. Yes? You with me? Okay. Hard to see that we're doing chain rule here, but this will help. If y is x squared, what's y prime? Good. 2x, do, do I, am I doing the chain rule there? Yes. The inside is x. The derivative of x is 1. But I don't bother multiplying by 1 because it doesn't do anything. But I have to see there's a clear inside here, right? Good. So, so now what if I said uh, y squared equals x? What happens on the left side if I do d dx of y squared and of x? Well, on the right, you know what happens. Derivative of x is what? 1. But I know what x squared has a derivative of. It's a 2x, right? So y squared is going to have a derivative of 2y times the derivative of the inside y prime. Yes. So it's, I really want us to see, uh, I should have done it the other way, that this function has an inside of y, right? Yeah, clearly the outside function is a square function, right? Uh, and now before, remember what I did, I told you that y, y is just y prime, right? Still, so I need, when I take a derivative of this, I'm going to have to have a y prime as well. So I have a chain rule. So the two comes down. Now I have y to the first power to the second power. And then I'm saying, what's the derivative of the inside? Y prime. Yes, question, Mike. Say again. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, so on the right hand side there, yeah? Yeah. 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 
So look, we, we know y equals x squared is y squared. So look, did I do implicit with, with y to the second line here? Right? Y to y prime, yes, that's implicit. I don't know what y is, or at least I don't know what the left hand side is. I know the right hand side is x squared and the derivative of that is x. So then I just I just switch it around a little bit, right? So derivative of this side for sure is one. That's okay, right? Good. We know the derivative of x squared is 2x, so the derivative of y squared must be 2y. But I have to do the chain rule. When it's not, when it's not in terms of x, I must do the chain rule. Right? So derivative of the inside is y prime. So let's take a look at this one again, and let's do a tangent line there. So y squared equals x, of course, we both know I can solve this for y, right? I can easily solve this for y by doing what to both sides? Square root. So I really know I get the top half, the plus and minus top half of a parabola sideways parabola, rotated 90 degrees, right? And so I'm going to, but I'm going to keep working with this left-hand side. I'm not going to work with the ex, explicit, I'm going to work with the implicit. So, um, on Desmos, right, I kind of want to put that y squared equals x there. So y squared equals x, and you'll see my parabola, yes? Right, the top half of the parabola is a square root function, right? Yeah. So um, let's let's get the tangent line there. Um, how about at at one one? Right, right. You agree that if if I square one, I still get one, right? Again, I'm not using this. Right, I'm using the other. I'm using this other function. We already did our derivative here, right? But I want just to stress the notation here. I'm doing ddx of y squared should equal ddx of x. Ddx is simply an operator called the derivative. Okay. So what do I get on the on the left? I get two y y prime equals one. This one I can solve for y prime. Are we okay here? Okay, so but so let's do this again. D D X of X squared uh, of X squared. It's two X times the derivative of X because that's the inside, right? And what's the derivative of X? One. So so I don't bother doing it most of the time because I know I'm going to be multiplying by one. Who cares? It doesn't change anything. So now I'm thinking d d x of y squared. It's got to be the same thing. Two y times y prime. It's got to be the same thing. So you're always going to multiply. Yes, you, yes, you always when you're taking a derivative of some unknown function, y, g, u, any letter that I'm saying is a function, right? But it's hidden for me. I don't know what it is. When I take the derivative, I've got to get the prime of that same function. It's weird. It's weird. It's 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 but it's so easy. And what do we do as humans? We think it's too easy, so we do something else, right? I don't know if you know this about us humans, but we, often when things are real easy, we'll make it complicated. And instead of just accepting that when you take a derivative of y, it's y prime, right? If you take a derivative of g, it's g prime. If you take a derivative of x, it's one. So we got all the rules for the x's, right? For x squared, for sine of x, everything, right? But now we're dealing with another variable here, and we, it's unknown. We don't know what it is. Okay, so y prime here is what? One over two y? And so we know m is y prime of one, right? Because my x and y were both one. So that's one over two times one, which is one over two. And my tangent line is y minus one equals one half of x minus one. 
So y minus 1 is 1 half x minus 1 half. I'm going to add 1. Uh, sorry, minus 1 half plus 1, which is just becomes a plus 1, right? Sorry, plus 1 half. <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to write and, and do arithmetic at the same time. And, of course, I'm going way too fast. But anyway, let's plot the point 1, 1. And our tangent line of y equals 1 half x plus 1 half. Right? So implicitly, we're, we're, we're still going to do the same thing. Right? We're going to try and get a slope, try and get a point. Right? That's the end of it. Yes. So I got 2yy y prime equal 1. Right? And I think we're starting to get okay with where the y prime is. Right? And then I just solve for y prime. I won't always be able to solve for y prime. I will let you know if I want you to solve for y prime. So I got y prime is 1 over 2y, and then I'm getting a slope, so I'm plugging in the y is 1. Right? Into the derivative, and I got 1 over 2. This might be the confusing part. It's like f prime of 1, right? That, that makes more sense. But I'm just using it like a function, like it has an input piece. All right, let's take a look uh, at the book and a problem in the book. Um, uh, and I gave you the suggested problems here already, I believe. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. And, and you know, we, we, we can, I'm, I'm sure you're all doing this, but you're not supposed to get everything right away. You, you, I remember leaving class in Calc 1 going, what the hell? You, you don't have to get things right away, but you want to think and you want to practice and you're going to make mistakes at home. Like you practice parallel parking with the, with the orange cones before you go to, to the real cars, right? And it's okay. You'll figure things out. You can't hide from it. You can't avoid doing it. You must get in there with pencil and paper or whatever you write with, right? Get in there and do the problem. And ask for help. You need to ask for help. Ask for help. All right, let's do... Uh, Oh, where am I? I'm supposed to be in 3.5. I'm in 3.4. Sorry. So let's let's start let's start with another tangent line, one where we can't. What do I got? A blank page in the book? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Sorry. I love some of these functions. Um, I was fascinated with polar. Uh, when I was learning pre-calculus, we did polar uh, graphs. Um, you know, it looked like the North Pole, the, the field, and it's, ang it's like it's all trig stuff, right? Um, and I thought there was maybe a way. Uh, what the hell? How did I do that again? I'm going to try it one more time. I'm supposed to be on 3.6. So I was fascinated with uh, functions that would have loops in them, right? Because we always learned that you can't have a loop in your function, right? And I was, saying, I was thinking to myself at that time, I'm going to come up with a way to write my name using a mathematical function. That's how much of a nerd I was even then, right? I never could do it, but I thought about it quite a bit. All right, so look at 37. This is, uh, it looks, you've seen it before, right? Lemnus gate. It's an it's a infinity symbol, right? Pretty cool that we could draw a function uh, like that, uh, you know, using a function. And it's, it's going to be implicit. 
So let me see if I can move this thing over without everything freaking out on me. Uh, so this is one that's going to be so nasty to do find Y prime, we're going to cheat on it, okay? So let me just take a quick picture because my brain will not remember it. So this is section 3-5, number, number 37. So 3.5, number 37. Uh, and we have, we have this sh particular shape called the lemnus gate. It looks like it's, go I don't care too much about where it's going through. Um, I'm not too worried about those details, but I do want to notice that it's got a 0.31 on it. Close enough, okay? Uh, of course, we're going to put it in Desmos, so I have 2 times x squared plus y squared quantity squared equals 25 x squared minus y squared, uh, and, and we have the point 3, comma 1. We want to get the tangent line at 3, 1. So what do I need for a tangent line? I need a derivative, right? I have a point. I need a slope. So to get the slope, I need a derivative. Yes, you with me? Let's put this into Desmos here. I already know I'm going to put the point three one on there, so I'll put that in there, and I, and you can just copy off of your page or copy off of me as I'm typing this, right? Uh, two times quantity x squared plus y squared. That quantity all squared equals. Say again. Oh. Uh, quantity x squared minus y squared. Boom. There it is. All right. We want to get our tangent line. Everybody okay here? Yes? Uh, I gave it to me in the problem. Yeah. And, and, and again, we're trying to, we're trying, remember, we're trying to get a tangent line. Uh, so, but you can see it, right? You can see it, the three, one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're going to, they're going to feed me nice points like I'm going to do for you. I'm going to say, hey, get me a tangent line at this point. I'm not randomly picking a point. I'm find, trying to find a good point with, like, I, I call them vampire points, right, where the crosshairs are. Yeah. All right, we need a derivative. So I am going to say ddx of both sides. Right? Both sides are a function, and they're equal. So if I get the derivatives of two equal functions, they better be equal, right? That makes sense? The first one, right? The first one, it actually looks like I, oh, I can't solve this for y, right? Because what happens when I FOIL this thing out, it gets real ugly, right? So, but anyway, um, I need two times the two x squared plus y squared but now to the first power, that's not a prime, right? Times the derivative of the inside. That is a prime. Okay, do we agree that x squared plus y squared is the inside? Okay. On the other side, um, I just need 25 uh, times x squared prime minus y squared prime, right? I just need the derivative of x squared and y squared there, right? You agree? I probably didn't need to, I probably could have gone right to the derivative there instead of doing that. In fact, let me do that. What's the derivative of x squared? Yeah, 2x times 1, right? Times the derivative of the inside, right? So, but I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm not going to bother doing the times 1. But now the y squared becomes what? 
two y y prime, right? Because the derivative of the inside, the inside is not x, the inside is y, and the derivative is y prime, right? We agree? All right, what, what do we have on the left? I have 4 times x squared plus y squared times 2x plus 2y y prime. Yep, I'm listening. Yeah, so I, I didn't want to do it right away. I was trying to say, let me take my time. Right? So when I did my derivative, I said, oh, I have something squared. So I know the 2 comes down and the power gets reduced to 1. And then i got to take the derivative of the inside. And I said, well, wait a minute, don't rush. I said, okay, I'll do that later. Right? Because I, I did this power rule part. I don't want to do too many things at once. I'm trying to take baby steps. So the next line I did, I said, okay, let me keep this, and now let me do that derivative. X derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of y squared is 2yy prime. And then on this oh, side, okay. Okay. And this side I went right away to derivative. The, the number goes from the right, the coefficient goes to the right. Derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of y squared is 2yy prime. All right. Yes, yes. D, DDX, right? That's how you say it. DDX means derivative. Prime means derivative. I could solve this for Y prime, but it's so ugly, I don't want to waste the time. And Robert will say to you, don't find Y prime, find a slope. And what that means is X is going to be 3, right? So every x becomes a 3, every y becomes a, a 1. Exactly. So 2 times 3 plus 2 times 1 times a y prime. You see, I'm putting in every x is 3, every y is 1. And of course, what I'll have left is just y primes. Right, you with me? Because it's a derivative, and I don't even know what the function is. So how could I know what the what the derivative is? But I do know what x and y are. So I'm plugging in for my x and y, and then I'll solve for y prime, which in this case will be exactly the slope. Right? It's not going to be a function. It's going to be a slope. So, so I'll keep going, you keep going. I think I have a 10 here. I have a 6 plus 2y prime equals 25 times 6 minus 2y prime. Um, so I have 40 times 6 plus 2y prime. Remember, I'm solving for y prime. What's this one? 6 times 25 is what, 150? I'm just doing arithmetic. You don't, you you you're racing me. You're not copying. So it looks like I get 130y prime equals help me negative negative 90. Negative 9 thirteenths. Anybody else get there? Okay. On your mark and said go. Don't copy. Do it yourself. Oh my god, time is flying. Time flies when you're having fun. Everyone else is going, oh my god, when's this class going to end? <laughs> we get there, negative 9 thirteenths? Anybody? No, I Sebastian got there? Um, yes? Nice? No, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to be wrong. All 
Okay, tangent line. Y minus 1 equals negative 9 thirteenths times X minus 3. So Y minus 1 equals negative 9 thirteenths X plus 27 thirteenths. I'm going to add 1 to both sides in the form of 13 over 13. And I get my tangent line y equals 9 thirteenths x plus 40 thirteenths. y equals negative 9 thirteenths times x plus 40 thirteenths. Boom! Ha! I love it. Yes? Exactly. So remember, y prime for us is supposed to be kind of a function that gives us a slope at any point. But this one is so messy, I just said, let's plug the points in now and then figure out the slope. Yeah. So would that be a y prime of negative 9 thirteen? Yes, the slope is at that point is negative 9 13. Y prime itself is is implicit and unsolvable, right? So I got to where? I got to, help me, right here. This is Y prime, but I can't isolate it. I can't solve for it. Most of the time, we won't be able to solve for it, but I still know it's going to give me the slope if I put points in, right? If I put the X and Y values in there, Y prime actually turns into M no longer a function, it's a function now, right? Do you agree with this? It's a function of x and y. But I can't get a pretty version of it. But I can, and I will do this, I will tell you this, sometimes I'll say we'll solve for y prime. Sometimes I'll say, just get me the slope, like I just did. I just put the points in and got the slope. All right, one more problem. I got only four minutes. Yeah, close this. Yes. So I got my slope of negative 9 13, and it had the point 3, 1. And remember, I'm doing y minus y1 equals x times quantity x minus x1. So you can see where the 1 and the 3 came from. Yep. And there's my slope. So I distribute my slope, right? 3 times 9 is 27. Oh, negative times negative is positive. Yep. I bring the 1 over. So this is a plus one. You can see it was a negative one on this side. Now it's a plus one on this side. I did it on purpose with 13 over 13 so I could just get a single numerator. Yeah, is that okay? There we go. Are you okay? Yeah. All right, one more problem. Don't let this one freak you out. But it's on every test I've ever given in calculus. But you're going to hate it at first. Okay? Yep, yep. There we go. Uh, tangent of x plus y is equal to x. I want you to find y prime in terms of x. What does that mean? At the end, it'll look like a function of x, right? Does that make sense? Yes, very, very strange looking. Almost like a bunch of uh, elevators, right? <laughs> All right, what did we learn in, in pre-cal about trig? If I say tangent is equal to some ratio. What, what do I know? If I have a trig, I have a triangle. A right triangle, right? I'm going to use alpha as my angle. So this thing really says tangent of alpha is equal to x. We agree? So once I have a trig, I have a triangle. Okay? Good. Tangent was what ratio? 
It's height over base. So x over 1 is x, correct? Whenever I have a trig, I have a right triangle. And I have to label my sides accordingly. How can I figure out the last side? Pythagorean theorem. Square root of 1 plus x squared. a squared plus b squared is c squared, right? Solve for c squared. You want, want me to do that? Yeah. So uh, 1 squared plus x squared equals c squared. Remember, I'm solving for c. So I get 1 plus x squared is equal to c squared, or c is equal to the positive, I don't care about the negative, uh, 1 plus x squared. Okay? Every time you see a trig for the rest of your mathematical life, you should be thinking, I might need a triangle, a right triangle. Okay? Every time you see a trig, get me a triangle for the rest of this semester. Um, you'll do it in Calc 2, too. It's one of the most difficult things in antiderivatives. Is, it's called a trig substitution. You'll take x's and turn them into trigs. So I'm ready to do my problem now because all of this is what I need uh, for the final answer, right? So, but I'm ready to take my derivative, yes? So ddx, what time is it? Oh, I'm not going to make it. ddx of the tangent of x plus y, that's a ddx, believe it or not, is equal to 1, right? Because I took, I took the derivative of, of the right side directly, right? Derivative of tangent is what? Secant squared of x plus y times the inside prime right times I need to do the derivative of the inside yes so what do I get I get secant squared of x plus y times 1 plus y prime is that okay and I don't have time to finish it so I'll finish it tomorrow uh, Friday I think the only thing I want you to to remember here is that when you see a trig, you see a triangle, right? What's that? Uh, I, I did Pythagorean theorem. Oh, uh, so I, I realized that x is really x over 1. So I'm seeing an opposite over, right? Opposite over adjacent is x over 1. Yeah. All right. See you all later.